Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm Evgeny. I'm uh, from Open Knowledge Foundation, and I've been working on the frictionless project like for a while. And now I'm proud to present you our our new development. It's called frictionless application. And yes, can you can you? Yes, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, sorry. Frictionless application, and it's uh, uh, basically IDE for working with tabular and other types of types of data, and currently we call it data management for humans. So. Um, uh, sorry, it's uh, it tend to be like zero coding application, but now we are releasing uh, the beta version, and it's only one command, two commands you need to run to start working this frictions application. It's to install. You, you need to Python to have Python, and you need to install frictions application and start. Um, it's against your data folder, like any on your computer, so. Be like going to release it as, as a desktop application soon, but currently it's like this. So uh, the interface. So it's basically just a typical IDE based on really a lot of examples uh, you already know. So it's a file manager, it's a, a editor, additional panels, all this stuff. So just try to be like familiar for like everyone. So you don't need to like learn it. And uh, like one slide ago, we started the application. And first, you just uh, getting um, your files, and it's a file manager. You can like upload new, create folder, move files, but just typical file manager. And uh, initially, like all files are gray, so basically, it's not validated or indexed, but then we're starting by clicking on files, and it's it just validates your data just by clicking, and it by validating it uh, means that uh, uh, behind frictionless we kind of and Lily worked a lot on it. Like we have sophisticated validation system detecting tabular errors, metadata errors, but here it's just like one click, and you're getting kind of like status of your of your data. I'll show what can be like errors. But first of all, just tables. It's uh, getting indexed uh, to a SQLite database, and you can do just any like exploring table or data, sorting, um, filtering, whatever. So it's just like a normal data viewer. You can like open the source uh, view to see what's your like initial CSV if it, if it was a CSV file. Um, but the errors, uh, like we wish we didn't have like errors in, sorry guys, uh, in uh, tabular data, but there are like a lot of errors, so the power of frictionless technologies is uh, um, finding the errors. So here's an example of a report showing like Here's a table, and it's uh, it was the metadata types was inferred automatically, and then uh, application found this like bad cell, which is not which is not a inter integer; it's a string, but it should be sorry, <laughs> it should be an integer. So we can enable errors view, so it will just uh, filter all the rows and sh and show only errored ones. So it, it, it could be like um, 10 million CC table, but you can just see only errors. And here is like, you're clicking, getting details. And it's, it's not like ready, but almost ready. If you'd like to clean it like manually, you can just do it as like in Excel. So just uh, clicking on the cell, fixing the error, saving file. Okay, so uh, the second like power powerful thing of uh, frictionless is uh, metadata. So uh, frictionless is based on the 
friction standards. It's uh, metadata standards for describing basically di like data description language, uh, describing tabular and other types of data. In the application, uh, it infers uh, metadata like for you, for example, um, for normal files, it's only kind of like information about uh, like format, type, etc. For tabular ones, it will be also a schema, data types, and uh, you can edit this and save. And I'll show like later why wh why will you be like editing uh, metadata. Like here, it's, it's my table, right? So it's, it's if you, for example, publish this table, uh, it will not be like just a table with a random name. It will have kind of like human readable description. What is it? So next one, it's uh, creating charts. So you can click uh, on the chart button. Uh, like for example, you were on the table cars, and you are clicking it. It tries to create like to guess what you're going to like show uh, from your data, from data types, and it just created this like chart. Charts are like big light, so we always try to rely on uh, existing like standards technologies, and uh, so it's it's just a first guess, and and. You can start like editing it. Currently, it's like really basic Vegalite editor, Visual One. So here we, we kind of like said that we are interested. It's not uh, shown here. We interested like in brands. It's it's cars basically, and we'd like to see like average price for each brand. So it's now this this table makes like more sense than the first one, which was like just random uh, something. So, but if you an expert. The same as with tables, you just start search view and edit, and you can edit like your Vegalite by hands, so it's just totally open. Uh, not yet done, but of course, uh, having all the like data indexed in the like database, of course, the application provides and just, just almost ready, provides a SQL interface. So you just uh, query, basically. So you have, you have like a folder on your computer with a lot of CSVs. You open it, and you can like query, merge, join, like your data. Like just kind of like SQL interface on top of similar to data set project. Uh, so it uh, gives you a uh, uh, field to write your query. Also, it suggests um, fields and tables so you can click, uh, for example, on, on the ID, double click, and it will be inserted into the query. So you don't need to remember all your data model. Uh, and by the way, um, names here is kind of like the ones you edit as a metadata, so you can provide your names. It's not from CSV, so you can make it more like having more sense. Um, also coming, but uh, once you have kind of like a SQL view, the same as in the databases, uh, you can use it, for example, for charts. If it were just kind of like a CSV, so you can, for the chart it will be not, uh, it will be basically the same, so you can you can have some files, create kind of like a few views, use it in the charts. And by the way, um, also the little bit difference uh, for regarding charts to Vegalite that here it will be, it will support not only Vegalite supports I think like C3 and uh, like JSON, but here you can use like Excel, and because it's, it, it renders uh, internally the chart, it will work for Excel or like View, which is not supported, of course, by Vegalite. So um, it's a little bit like specific, but we have a kind of like big community of people creating uh, stand, uh, metadata based on our standards, 
like here, for example, uh, for open data portals. And uh, they used to uh, kind of like edit uh, metadata by hands. So here you can just like open table schema. It's one of our standards to describe a CSV file and just edit it as a uh, in visual interface and uh, just save it and reuse. Um, it's a simple thing. Uh, of course, markdown editing, so you can uh, write uh, markdown documents. But more interesting that we're working on the uh, there's other project of uh, frictionless called Ymark. It's a visualization uh, static site generator based on markdown, but with tables, charts, visualizations. And uh, here you kind of like you'll be able to just, you know, drag and drop your chart here. And it will be creating like website like this. And you, you can like publish it, for example, to Netlify or GitHub pages. And uh, it's just static site. So it doesn't require any like server infrastructure. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, oh, that's <laughs> other files. So usually data sets, it's not only tables and et cetera, like descriptions, PDFs, uh, pictures. So it's kind of like MIT licensed cat going like to our data set. Good, not Creative Commons. Okay, um, so the same metadata. So data, and you add metadata to describe your like intention. Um, so finally, we're creating a data package. Data package is a, a format to describe a data set. So you just create a data package and add what you'd like to include in your da data set. So for example, like these files. So it's here, like it also validates, it's valid. And we can, we can publish it currently, currently uh, only CCAN supported. But uh, of course, like it's uh, because it's based on the frictionless framework in Python. We already have like uh, connections to other uh, platforms, so we're going to add it really soon. But CCAN, let's uh, AP providing API key. Let's publish, and here we go. It's like on CCAN, but it's valid. You're pretty sure because it showed you like errors and well described, which is also like really important because there are a lot of CSV files on all these like open data portals, but you don't know what is it. And and data package kind of data package this data package JSON is kind of like API for data. So if you have data package JSON somewhere on the web, you can read it, for example, with frictions framework application. And, and other tools for other languages we have for R, for etc. So PM coming soon. Uh, desktop application, other data po portals, opening like remotes. You can, for example, instance inside the application, uh, faceting classing standard stuff. Uh, Wikidata integration, really interesting topic for us. And um, yeah, other declarative pipelines. Yeah, it's really it's good to edit manually, but it will be. And we have already like a model for it for decorative pipelines. Uh, so w important notice, it's beta for next two, two months. So it's not for production, not for important files. <laughs> I, I hope you, you, you all use like Git and like all this stuff, but just, just to make sure. Um, releasing in June version one, it's beta, it will be version one. Frictions application in data literacy can be like really, I think, really good for teaching. So it's like uh, I have I have like a kid. I, I I'm going to like uh, introduce Open Refine to him like when he's 16. But I think for frictions application eight will be good. But <laughs> still still seven years. But uh, feedback, please don't forget to support Ukrainian people. They are struggling. And uh, thanks for your time. Yeah. Thank you very much for that talk. Um, we have several minutes for questions. I see we have a question. 
I'm going to give you the microphone. Thank you, Yevgeny, for the presentation. It was very interesting. Etabila uh, Krasiva Yakoshka, that was a uh, pretty cat in, in Russian. Uh, it was a nice, I, nice cat. <laughs> <laughs> Um, sometimes I, 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 my question is about uh, we have a frictionless application, we have frictionless framework, and we have the uh, frictionless data specifications, the specs. And sometimes uh, there, I, I feel that there's a race between them. Some some advance more than others. I want I wanted to know um, how do you approach uh, this if. Uh, First, we experiment with the framework, and then we update the specifications, etc. Because I have a very concrete example. Uh, in the friction framework, uh, we have um, the metadata can be stored in JSON or YAML. However, uh, at the specs specification, uh, only JSON is allowed. But we find ourselves using more and more YAML, but that's not part of the specs. So I wanted uh, you to comment some, uh, something about uh, how these things go together, which goes first, uh, how do you approach evolution of the specs? And yes, well, thank you, I thank really you. good one. Uh, in a, like really timely because uh, currently we're trying to start working on specs standards version two to wrap it up and make it like, like really real industrial standard and trying to promote it to other open data portals uh, to be kind of like a data API standard one. And uh, regarding all other stuff, it's basically currently it's, it's, it's like one, it's one project. So it's the same code base, so they just uh, in sync. So when we so basically frictions application is kind of like just a UI for the for the fr Python framework. So it's uh, it's one project, and uh, it's uh, devel being developed just uh, in sync and as one thing. Um, ha have you seen how it handles uh, CSVs that get very large? Like if I. Throw, if I install this on my laptop and I throw a five gigabyte CSV at it, um, is it going to hang for 10 minutes or how, how uh, is it dealing with that? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, currently, I think it can struggle because uh, friction validation is not very, really fast. But we just got, and based on your like help, it's also our, our community member, uh, this idea of indexing uh, files. We got really quick indexer just based on SQLite, uh, like, uh, native indexer, and if uh, we're going to introduce this like mode when you don't validate but just uh, up upload data to SQLite, and it's like really fast for local files. So so it's yes, it's, it's and it's just uh, kind of like a view for the SQL da database, so it uh, can be like any size based on if you have like space on your computer. Thank you. <laughs> 